Later in the summer, won the 10K No Limit, deuce to seven. Sure. Had two second place finishes at Triton in London. Okay. You said it, a changed man. He has been <coughs> crushing. Oh, Known for a while for running the worst. Ice cream tea, in the lemon and honey, no sugar. Thank By you. a mile, it wasn't That's even close. Such a talented player and yeah, coupled that with diamond. being remarkably unlucky in the biggest moments. No, he no battled set, no through bet. it all. In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, I, Jonathan Little, I'm at the final table of a $10,000 buy-in tournament at the Poker Masters in the Poker Go studio in Las Vegas. In this hand, it falls down to Daniel Negreanu on the button with 16 big blinds with Jack three of hearts. And he opts to raise to two big blinds. And at least in my opinion, this is far too loose. This is a spot where I, as one of the big sacks, should be defending the big blind very wide at a final table. Chino in the small blind is known to get in there and gamble. And for that reason, even if there were no pout applications, Jack three of hearts would be too loose. But accounting for the fact that I'm gonna be a little bit splashy and the fact that Brock Wilson and Justin Saliba, two excellent poker coaching coaches, by the way, they also are sitting at the final table with relatively short stacks. This is a spot where Negranu should be very tight. Now, I totally understand that Negranu probably cares about the payouts less than most poker players because he's playing for the prestige, right? He wants to win the purple jacket and all the titles. So that certainly is a reason to ignore payouts a little bit. That said, Jack three parts is too loose. Chino folds around to me with 10-9 offsuit in the big blind. This is a great hand to see the flop. If you told me Negranu is going to be raising as wide as Jack three of hearts, this might be a spot where I can shove incredibly wide if I expect him to fold out a large chunk of the time. Now, I don't know exactly what he's going to do. Obviously, though, if he's raising Jack three of hearts, he's probably raising Jack four of hearts and Jack six of hearts and Queen two of hearts and a lot of junk that just can't defend against it all in. So perhaps this is a spot where I could get really insane and just jam it all in on him. That said, the default play in the spot, especially if I don't know that he's raising this wide, is definitely to call and go from there. I don't know. Little flops of nine here. You're gonna find that. You're gonna find this. Gonna find it. It's been a difficult start thus far for Kid Poker. Flop comes, ace of clubs, nine of clubs, five of diamonds. An interesting thing about this scenario is that if Negranu is playing as if there are payout implications, as you generally should presume most good players are going to do, at least within reason, he should probably go all in for 16 big blinds with a lot of his ace X before the flop because he really doesn't want to raise and then get shoved on and have to fold out a hand like ace X due to the other two short sacks at the table. So I don't expect Negranu to have a ton of ace X in his range. Also, consider my range. In this scenario, I would also have gone all in with a lot of ace -X before the flop. Ace-X is a really good hand to shove all in in these scenarios because it blocks Negranu's calling range, which means the all-in is going to get through a lot of the time, and I'm just going to win a little pre-flop pot. So neither of us have a ton of ace -X. So if neither of us have a ton of ace -X, this nine that I have is actually pretty good. So I check. Negranu has two options. He can either just give it up, or he can go for a small continuation bet with a lot of his range, and I think that's probably fine because his range will contain some ace -X that are too good to shove pre-flop, plus a few others, and my range really does not have a whole lot of ace -X, so I definitely like a small bet from him. Facing the small bet, obviously I'm not folding the pair. Let's head to the turn. Another ace on the turn. Dead to a jack <laughs> or <laughs> dead to a successful bluff. By the sounds of it, that's exactly what he is trying to do. He goes 175 now on this turn. The turn is the ace of diamonds putting up a backdoor flush draw. So now there is a club flush draw on the flop, a diamond flush draw on the turn, and also a lot of straight draws with 8-7, 8-6, and 7-6. All right, I check the turn as I'm going to do with my entire range. And now Negranu bets 175, about half pot, leaving himself 465,000 behind. Very likely 
at least making it look like he's going to want to shove on the river. And look, I again, going back to what I said on the flop, I think my hand's a little bit too good to fold. And now that another ace has come on the turn, it's way less likely that Negranu has an ace because there's now one fewer ace available. And for that reason, I don't really see how I can fold this hand. Um, in this spot, I don't especially want to block Negranu's logical bluffs. So you have to consider which hands are logical bluffing hands. Now, look, I know Negranu has done a ton of studying in the GTO realm, and he's going to be choosing bluffs from all over the place, such as high equity draws, like good flush draws, junky draws, like 7-6, and just some total air balls, like apparently the Jack-3 of hearts. Now, again, if he's raising far too wide before the flop, he's going to have a lot of total misses here, like queen to a spades, right? And all the hands like that. And if he's going to be bluffing with a lot of those, or perhaps all of those, because maybe he thinks I'm a little bit weak or whatever, then I certainly can't go around folding a pair. So he bets 175, and uh, I'm buckling up and calling and hoping for a nice river. Which is little no sizing-wise, could set up a quite a nice river jam. Does it come as a pure bluff, or does Negranu shut it down? Imagine that you are down Negranu, sitting across the table from me, Jonathan Little, a self-proclaimed calling station. You've reached the river with Jack High. All the draws miss, or at least a lot of them. What I want to know is, would you go for the all-in bluff, or would you just check it back thinking I'm a calling station? Take a second, think about it, and write down in the comment section below what you would do in this very high-pressure spot. As Negranu knows, perhaps Little shoves with a decent amount of aces pre-flop. Negranu is going to go for it here. Just jack high. work. We never see Negranu bluffing in these spots. He's always got the goods. What would you say it was? After a little bit of thought, not that much actually, maybe there's some timing issues there, Negranu goes all in minus one big blind. You may ask, why leave one big blind? Well, anytime you're in a scenario where there are big pound applications, you really, really, really don't want to go broke because every once in a while, one of the other short stacks will go broke before you do. And then you get a payout jump and you collect some free money. Maybe even the big stacks get aces and kings against each other. And they play a huge pot and you get a payout jump for free. Or sometimes you take that one big blind and you spin it up and then you hang out in the tournament. Getting one additional big blind into your stack whenever you happen to have a value hand and you shove and they call and you win is worth way less than staying in the tournament with that tiny, tiny, tiny one big blind stack. So make sure you do that. Some people thought this was an obvious tell that he must be weak. He's saving some just in case I call. But no, this is not a tell. This is just good poker. So should Negranu bluff with this jack three of hearts? Well, in this scenario, you want to ask, which hands does Negranu really want me to have? Well, on this river, he really wants me to have a busted flush draw, either clubs or diamonds, or a five that may decide to find a fold. And for that reason, Negranu really does not want to have clubs or diamonds. And in terms of kickers that interact with the five, I don't think it matters all that much because I'm going to be defending the big blind with all sorts of stuff before the flop against the min raise. So Negranu really does not want to have clubs or diamonds. And I think with a hand that has no clubs or diamonds, and the three is just like kind of a break that doesn't interact with the board much at all. I think this is a very good spot for Negranu to bluff. Feels dirty, feels bad, but assuming he raises his hand pre-flop, and he bet the flop, and he bet the turn, which, you know, he didn't necessarily have to do. If he gets to the river here, I think he has to go for it. Let's see if I can find the call. Both flush draws miss. No club in Little's hand does have a diamond. I don't think it's correct. I think I'm not supposed to do Little does find the call, and it's a good call at that. Jonathan Little wrestles that chip lead right back. 
And Negranu is down to one big blind. Going all the way back to preflop, accounting for the fact that I presume Negranu did not have a whole lot of ace-x in his range, I think this is a pretty easy call. Whenever lots of draws miss, you just have to be willing to find the call. Also notice in my hand, I do not have any clubs, which is a very, very likely hand that would bet the flop and continue betting the turn some portion of the time. The 10 of diamonds is not great because we do block hands like Jack 10 of diamonds that would bet the flop and then keep betting the turn, but that's okay. Um, we also do lose to 8-7, which got there, which is annoying. We also lose to perhaps some thin value bets like pocket jacks. You may say, would well, Negranu actually value bet pocket jacks here? And look, Negranu knows that I don't have a whole lot of ace X. And if I don't have a whole lot of ace X, then pocket jacks is basically the nuts, right? So I do lose to those hands as well. I'm not sure everyone would bet those in the spot because kind of like how Negranu wants to keep one big blind behind. He'd also really like to keep, what, what is this? Nine big blinds behind if at all possible when he happens to be beat, especially if he doesn't think I'm going to call off too wide. But whatever. I think this is a spot where the 10-9 is very near the top of my range. And when you're playing against good, strong, world-class opponents, you can't really go around folding out the top of your range. So I made the call. I went a nice pot. Negranu's left with one big blind. And he actually spins it up to five big blinds. But then he goes broke in sixth place. I've been on to take second place in this tournament. I can't complain. I'm happy with the result. And that's fine and good. I actually have a new book that just came out. Maybe you saw it back there. It's called... 100 Essential Tips to Master No Limit Hold'em. A lot of people ask me about hand reading. How do you make reads like this? And look, in this hand, I don't really think it's rocket science. I think it really is a few key points coming together. And this book, 100 Essential Tips, will help you put together a lot of those points. Like right here, he didn't shove preflop, so it's lacking a sex. Lots of draws missed on the river. I need to be a little bit call happy when lots of draws miss on the river. 10 nine's one of the best hands I can have. Don't fold that against good people, right? All these things come together to make this a somewhat trivially easy call in my mind. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but this time it did we want a nice pod. Anyway, you can get this book. We'll put a link in the description below. Almost knocked over my coffee. Make sure you check it out. Good luck in your games. Have fun. When you decide to hero call, I hope you're right. And if you want another video featuring Dale Negranu, I have another one lined up for you next where he makes a perfect read at the final table. Enjoy.